to bring people freedom. And so I'm going to put freedom here in the middle. Now, we had a lady contact us uh, kind of mid-January, and she had been seeing on YouTube, actually, some videos of people getting prayed for and really changed and baptized and really changed. And she's like, oh, my life's messed up. I think I need that. <laughs> so that's how she had contacted us and said, uh, I need this. And so but she came to us, uh, and this is how all of you who are disciples of Jesus uh, are able to lead people into to freedom. Uh, so just want to guide through tonight what maybe I, I guided that girl through when she came here. Uh, so just so you know, she was um, a cocaine addict for 15 years, diagnosed with almost every mental health condition you can think of, uh, borderline homeless at points, suicidal, passive witchcraft, and all kinds of like really rough, brutal things in life had really fallen off track, and she but she wanted freedom. So we, she came over here, we had supper together, we went down to the park, and while we are at the park, I said, oh, well, do you need like healing for anything? So she said about her carpal tunnel syndrome. So we prayed for her wrists, and like uh, she had no more pain in her wrists, and she could feel her hand, but she couldn't feel it before, it had numbness. So she was really touched, you know? So we came back to the house here, and uh, I shared with her this, okay? So this is what you could share with people. Um, but to, to freedom, uh, there's kind of the main way to freedom is, is the gospel. Okay. Stop being weird. That's the only one. <laughs> but um, there's also uh, deliverance. It's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, this is a pyramid scheme. I'm trapped in <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Renewing the minds. Okay, so I just I laid out that for her, and I said probably tonight we'll mainly just deal with the gospel. And so I sh shared the gospel with her, and then how she can respond to the gospel. So so that night she got baptized, and actually some evil spirits left her uh, when she came out of the water, and she. Uh, received the Holy Spirit, uh, and it was really powerful, uh, but it was about a two-week process of actually going through, uh, so we dealt with this the first night, but she, and she had total freedom the next day, but then major attacks came the second day, like she went back to the drugs hard, uh, basically she had so many evil spirits in her that they were actually sometimes controlling her whole body and talking out of her, um, but so we went through basically bouncing back and forth between these things after she responded to the gospel. Over a two-week period, she threw out cocaine. She uh, cut ties with. She burned her witchcraft books. She uh, repented of more things. So I, and as she left these things, then uh, more deliverance from the evil spirits happened. Mm -hmm. she, she renewed. Her, we had renewing of the mind as she kept coming to learn. And so it was like freedom happened over like a two week period. And what to the point where like she was completely free of, of the, the draw to the cocaine without withdrawals, which is the crazy Please part, go. without any withdrawals. Um, so, but the drug dealers kept coming to her to try to hook her back in. So we really recommended that she goes to a rehab program just to get away from every temptation and hook back in. So she's there right now, so we're stoked for when she comes out of it, and she's like, I'm sharing this story, like the world's going to know about what, um, what Jesus has done. Um, so, so anyways, but I want to share with you how I shared the gospel with her. It's a pretty simple way. Uh, you can share the gospel with someone in like 30 seconds, right? Like, like uh, man, you want freedom? Like, Jesus uh, has paid the price for your freedom, you know? He's went to the cross and died for you to cover your shame and your guilt and your sins and to, and to set you free. Uh, so, so through believing in him. So you can like share a gospel in like a minute. But if I have more time, I like to like sit down with somebody at a Tim Hortons after they get healed or, or at their house or something and like spend like 10 minutes really laying it out a bit, especially if they have like no background with the Bible. So uh, here's some kids. Uh, so we're going to do a little pups gospel here. So this would be like how to have a relationship with God. The very beginning is for freedom is you need Jesus uh, for freedom. Uh, so how to start a relationship with God is, is the thing here. And the first thing about having a relationship is it's a two-way street. So um, God's actually like often pursuing people. Uh, but at 
some point we have to pursue back or to respond to. Uh, it's the biggest part of this message. So like, uh, I met this girl Jasmine at one point in life, and I really liked her. So I started pursuing her. <laughs> she got a job at, at Winners, at the store Winners. That's okay. right. So then guess where I got a job? Winners. I got a job at Winners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was pursuing her. So anyways, but I, I started pursuing her. And then uh, the next night, we had to work till like 5 o'clock at night. And, but the boss came to us and says, ah, you have to work three more hours. So I was like, ah, shoot. Oh, wait. We haven't had supper yet. So I went to her and I said, hey, well, how about I take you out for supper after? She says, uh, that'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pursuing and she's rejecting. And I pursued another time or two and she's still rejected. But at a, another time, there was a slight opening where she said, I'm just not quite ready yet. And so that was a slight open door for me. Where eventually she came to the knowledge of the truth. I'm just I'm just saying this because because I kept pursuing. Yeah. At a certain point, she had to reciprocate. Okay, so God's always pursuing people. Yeah. At a certain point, we have to reciprocate. So you have to respond to this oh message. It's good. a good analogy. Good. 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 And now she's really in the truth. Okay. So, with this relationship with God, He's the one that started it out, and He made a perfect world where there was no pain, no suffering, no death. Actually, He made a put them in the uh, first humans in the Garden of Eden, uh, where there was there was a perfect world. Okay. So He actually put uh, the first people uh, put the first people onto Earth, Adam and Eve. Okay, and he breathed life into them. Where's the Holy Spirit water? I need that Holy Spirit water. He breathed life into them, and they became spirit beings. Okay? And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hovered over all of creation, and God walked with them in the shadow of the day, or in the coolness of the day. All right? So there was a really direct relationship. It was amazing. Um, they always could be with God. And he put a tree in the garden called the tree of life. And if you ate from that tree, you would live forever. So that was God's original intent, that we would live forever. Uh, but he put another tree in the middle of the garden too, called the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, that's the only tree that you can't eat from. A lot of people would be like, what the heck? Why would you put something there if you knew maybe they'd mess up or something? Uh, but it just shows God's heart that he actually wants that relationship. It, it's a, a free will thing. Uh, it's basically, yeah, my wife shows me that she loves me because she doesn't, she goes for me and not the millions of other guys. Out there. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's, there's actually an option away from God. It's a, it's a, we're not robots forced to. Live. So, but Adam and Eve, they end up going towards that tree and, and Satan is in the tree and he tempts them. The first temptation, he says, eat from this tree and you'll uh, know the difference between good and evil. You'll be just like God. And so uh, Eve and Adam, they end up taking a bite. And this was a very major, serious uh, point in history where uh, sin entered the world. Uh, so there was a lot of consequences with this rejecting God, uh, rejecting the relationship. Is that, first of all, they were uh, kicked out of the garden. Okay, so they could no longer have access to the tree of life. They were kicked out of the garden. So they would no longer live forever. They couldn't be in the garden anymore because it was a perfect place. And they are no longer perfect. Okay, So they were kicked out. And they lost that direct relationship with God. And they became spiritually dead. Okay. And uh, so this is the first sin that entered the world. Okay. Uh, it came with suffering and and death. And if you just turn on the TV, watch the news for a few minutes, you'll see the effects of this today. And so uh, what happened was that they had uh, kids, and their kids weren't born the same way that they were born in the garden. The kids were born spiritually dead. And the first, the first kids, uh, Cain killed Abel. So already there was uh, really horrible things. It went from one... People call them minor sin to really serious things. And more and more multiplication as more and more people had kids, but they're all born this way. It's called a sin nature. So they actually had a DNA uh, 
where they're born with a, a desire towards sin and wrong. Um, and so this is the state that we all live in today. And if you die in this state, um, we'll talk about that, the, the seriousness of sin, okay? So I'm just going to flip this open so I can show you a little illustration. But, uh, okay, so God, he's actually going to, woo, Holy Spirit water on He's going <laughs> he's gonna to judge us at the end of our life, and he uh, has really high expectations, because heaven's a perfect place, so if you want to get there, like, um, if you want to be in heaven, you you got to be perfect. He can't let you in if you're not perfect, then it wouldn't be perfect. You can just let Hitler in, or hit, heaven wouldn't be heaven. <laughs> All right, so, um, you want to be God? <laughs> so at the end of our life, we, we got to present ourselves to God, okay? And this is 100% H2O, so if you're a God, would you drink that? Yeah. Don't actually drink it. I'm not going to. From. <laughs> okay. Uh, so she would drink that, okay? But when we do a sin, so pretend this is lethal poison. <gasps> Okay, just one drop of lethal poison when you drink that. No. No, you wouldn't, right? Um, so just from one sin, the Bible says uh, we um, are separated from God, can't be accepted by God, and actually uh, the consequence of that is not being able to go to heaven at the end of your life, not knowing them on this earth right now, but also when you die. And uh, the, the only other option is to, to go to hell for eternity. So um, there's an eternal consequences for the way we live and and this is the way I've lived with in my life I've done lots of sin and um, and, I, and this is the state that I was in at one point in life and so um, we try to get ourselves out of this by our own strength is what we often try to do we try to save ourselves okay we need to be saved okay but what we try to do often is save ourselves so what some people do is they try to do good things okay so they might say a prayer they might go to church, they might help a lady cross the road, they might donate money, okay? They do a bunch of good things. Now, would you drink that? Mm. Still got that lethal poison in okay. So doing good things doesn't make up for doing bad things. No matter how many good you do, it doesn't make up for the wrong. Like when a judge goes to judge someone in court, uh, he, and they say they robbed a bank, uh, and they're before the judge, and they say, well, what about when I helped that lady cross the road? Judge is like, I don't care, I'm looking at the bad thing. Um, so yeah. In my life, if my whole if all the wrong things I'd done were put on like a condensed to like a five minute video, I definitely would go to every means to ban the video from getting released. Um, so we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And another thing that people try to do to save themselves from that is Let's just pretend we got character number two over here. And this guy's really sinful. This guy's like Kevin here. He's really sinful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This guy's done a lot of sins. Okay. He's, more effect, he's been to prison. He's done drugs or something really, I don't know, really bad things. Okay. What we do and what I used to do in my life is I'd go around and I'd say, oh, look at that. I'm actually a pretty good person. I'm not that bad at all. I bet God would accept me. One day, I'm a pretty good person. So we compare ourselves to others, but that doesn't change the state of how we are before God. Okay. And in prison, everybody thinks they're a good person because they just look at the guy a few cells down. At least I didn't do that thing, right? So we're all still in this state of needing to be saved. Now God loves us, okay, and He wants to give us a second chance, and He doesn't want to leave us in this state. So He actually has made a way out. He's made a way of salvation and being saved from the state. And what he did 2,000 years ago, he took a major, a major step towards us, and he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to the earth. And what was amazing... Woo! Cup runneth over. Overflowing. Wow. Jesus. What's amazing... Wow. Jesus has okay. lots. <laughs> Check it out. In, for like 2,000 years, okay, there was all these, uh, everyone was spiritually dead, but there were always prophecies of this person to come, this Messiah to come, who would save us from this condition, okay? And uh, all the prophecies, and they were fulfilled in Jesus coming to the earth, God coming as a man, 
And what was unique about him, though, he wasn't born like everyone else because he was actually conceived of the Holy Spirit. So he was um, implanted into Mary and uh, was actually born uh, with the Holy Spirit already in him. So that was very unique. The first person in history since Adam and Eve to be born that way. And so uh, he grew up, lived uh, at the age of 30. uh, A big change happened where he got baptized. So at the age of 30, um, he walks down to the river and John says, there's the Lamb of God who's uh, come to take away the sins of the world. Okay, so he went under the water and got baptized. And when he came back up, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. Okay? And so he was fully like Adam and Eve were in the garden there at the age of 30. So there was a lot of people who were spiritually dead. And he went around the earth, walked around, healing the sick, casting out demons, sharing the good news. And people noticed a difference as he overflowed, as the Holy Spirit overflowed. They were awoken spiritually, and they saw a difference. And uh, But after doing all these good things, everyone wanted to kill him. because Mainly because he claimed to be God. And so, uh, yeah, perfect. Never done anything wrong, but they strung him upon a cross for me. Um, with this, I actually deserve to be um, whipped and spit on and crucified and tortured and thrown to hell. Uh, that's what I deserve. If if God was a really uh, uh, just judge me straight up, all my own merits, that's what I deserve. But Jesus, He went on the cross and uh, He took all my sins upon Himself and took the nails for me, the whips for me, and was crucified for me, shed His blood for me. And this is this is an amazing thing. What Jesus has done for us, He's died for our sins, and they they buried Him. Uh, but the grave couldn't hold him. <laughs> uh, because three days later, he rose from the dead, and uh, proving that he was uh, he was who he said he was, and he took uh, he took the power over Satan when when that when that all went down. And so, uh, this is the good news of what Jesus has done, and we can receive it as well now. Uh, sorry, with what Jesus has done, we can receive salvation through him, so we can be saved. Um, so, if this is me here, and I want to, uh, with this gospel message, I could just look at it and be like, okay, that's great. Maybe one day God will just do something and show up. But um, it's actually our step to move towards him and to receive this. So we can receive this message, we can receive the salvation that Jesus offers. And so... Uh, this was me. Um, so five. So uh, what we need to do is uh, leave. We have to want to leave our sins. Okay. We have to want to leave our sins. Repent. It's called repent of our sins. So this is how we respond to it: repenting of our sins. Okay. Putting our faith in Jesus, and in our faith in Jesus alone is why how we are saved. So when we truly believe in Jesus, we want to. Re- have everything he has to offer and, and he says to be baptized yeah. and so uh, if this is this is you uh, you can leave your sins believe upon Jesus and true faith is going to want to obey that command to be baptized die with Christ so you die with Christ you go under the water just as he died and and you come up to new life okay and people come up as and with the laying upon of hands and everything, they get filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and they can go around doing the same things Jesus did. They receive new life. Mm-hmm. They can go around doing the same things Jesus did. But what's cool is they actually keep being saved. Okay, it's not just a one-time thing. But as you keep living in the Spirit, you keep being saved, and you keep being saved as you keep well, this walk with Jesus. You keep being saved as the years go on. You keep being saved and purified and made new. So, there's still a slight uh, taint to this water, uh, but what's really cool actually, no matter what point when you die, when you do get baptized, you're, um, it says when you're baptized in Galatians, it says you're, that you're clothed with Christ. So when God looks at you, he actually uh, doesn't see that taintedness, but he sees the, the righteousness of Christ, that you're, you're clothed in Christ. Yeah. And so... Uh, but we still want to continue to be purified on the inside, right? 
And so that's a whole a whole life of continuing to serve the Lord Jesus. Now, um, what happens at the end of your life when you die? Judge. Ah. Really make a mess with how the judge sees Jesus and says, Yes, you are righteous, you are pure. And you get to go to a new heaven and new earth where guess what's there? Tree of life. The tree of life is there. And you go back to Eden from the tree of life into the garden. And that perfect garden where there's no pain, no suffering, no tears to live forever. So praise the Lord. This is what we can receive when we repent, believe in Jesus, get baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we can go around doing these same things, healing the sick, casting out demons, sharing this good news. And the kingdom of God advances rapidly to many, many people, many people coming to freedom, coming to freedom. Yeah. Uh, so this is an amazing news, what the Lord wants to do in you, through you, and not only for you, but for the world. And eternal life doesn't, it says eternal life is this, to know God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. So just in knowing the Father, that relationship, when that relationship hits, eternal life hits. So I'm already in eternity right now and today. You can step into eternity today. Amen. So thank you, Jesus, for your good news, for your gospel. And uh, with anybody who's... Okay, so, so I just want to finish off with a prayer for people who are actually wanting to respond to this. You can respond to it in your heart to uh, receive Jesus. There's a lot of people... for years walking around with shame and guilt and you can be set free from years of shame and guilt you can step into freedom so yeah you can pray this with me from your house so you just say father I come to you come to you thank you for Jesus thank you for Jesus I believe that Jesus has died to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. I receive you, Jesus. I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins. And I turn to you, God. I receive your salvation through Jesus alone. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. So if you sincerely uh, prayed that for the first time, that's a powerful thing. That's a huge step in, in uh, repentance and faith in Jesus. And then I would, uh, I would say that you need to get baptized. So you can reach out to myself or uh, I can find someone in your area to baptize you and, and uh, to receive this new life. Um, so praise the Lord. He's uh, transforming all of Canada and all of the world through this message yes. every day. Doesn't matter what background you're from, this is for you. Doesn't matter who you are, this is for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.